Well, you may have seen that video that I released earlier this afternoon on the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore. Well, guess what? This evening, the NTSB just released some new video. So they got on board and they were able to use a drone to shoot some more video on board the boat today. And they got inside the bridge. And then they also released at a press conference at 8 o'clock tonight some additional information. They got the VDR, that's the Voyage Data Recorder. And so they presented some of that to us. So I'm going to show you all of that here tonight. Okay, so here's the short video that the NTSB just released about an hour ago. And here it shows them getting ready to launch their drone. This means they will be providing us with some newer video that we have not seen yet. And so here they're coming around and they're going to start to get some video around the front of the bow. Now I'm hoping they show us a lot more detail. They're going to show us a little bit here in a second. But I'm hoping that they um, upload some more, uh, much more detailed close-up shots. So here is one of the best shots we've seen yet. And you can tell that the dolly, it looks like it really only glanced up against the uh, pylons here. The problem is, is, you know, they kind of stand up at an angle. And when the ship bumps into it, it's going to start to shear them. So this kind of reminds me of the Titanic, how the Titanic didn't hit the iceberg head on. It basically just glanced it, kind of, and scraped it along the edge of it. And you can sort of see it, too, along the front where the stern is, of sort of where it, it looks like it might have scraped. So can't really tell. We just need a lot more detail here to be able to discern what's going on there. But this is the, the best close-up detail we've had so far. Um, looking at the, the dolly and the damage done to the deck there. And you can see a whole section of the roadway right there sit, resting right on top, just underneath the truss. So quite a mess. This must have been one scary sight to have to witness from the bridge. And in typical NTSB style, they always show us like little portions of video that are kind of boring or a lot of nothing as I like to call it. Here they're operating the drone, so it's just showing the drone operator controlling the, the drone out in front of them over the bow. And I believe that's Jennifer Homendy in the middle there. She's the NTSB chair. And the guy in the green helmet looks really familiar to me. I think he's one of the guys that investigated the FIU bridge collapse. I seem to recognize him from the testimony and the hearings the public hearings so again they're just kind of basically not showing us a whole lot so i always try to look in the background around the videos and try to get details and clues of what's going on but they tend to do this a lot they make it look like they're showing you a whole lot of stuff but they're basically showing you a whole lot of nothing and man this camera must have been out in the rain for a good spell there so what an interesting view, looking all the way up that continuous truss there, all the way up to the end of the bridge. See where it detached off of the pylons up there? Man, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall there. There's a section of the roadway there resting on top of the dolly. And that's all she wrote there on that video. Now let's check out pictures they gave us from uh, inside. So there they are on the bridge. And there they are standing outside the bridge. And they're looking up towards the other end of where the truss collapsed. There's another photo inside the bridge. And standing out in front of the bridge, there's the dolly sign in the background. And they're just kind of congregating there, looking up that long, continuous truss that fell. Man, what a sight that must be there. How scary that must look. Another great shot inside the bridge. And finishing up with the drone on the outside of the front of the bridge. Now, they also mentioned in the press conference this evening that they were able to recover some preliminary data from the Voyage Data Recorder. 
And so they had like audio and speed and VHF stuff that they were talking on the radio, all sorts of stuff. They only have the first six hours. The rest of it is in the 30-day storage and the memory that they have to go back and get later. The NTSB said they were able to get into Dolly's VDR and uh, that it shows that it left the port at 12.39 a.m., and it recorded everything right up to the moment that it struck the bridge at I-695 there. And by 1.07 a.m., the ship had entered the Ford McHenry Channel. And by 1.24, the ship was underway on a true heading of approximately 141 degrees in the channel at a speed of about 8 knots. It's to me like the trouble started here right around 1.24 a.m. Well, it looks like about 1.25. So numerous oral alarms were heard. And the VDR stopped working, but the audio part of it did continue going using the redundant power source. And then at 126.02, the VDR resumed recording the data again. And there were steering commands and all that, so they can go through all of that. And they're going to give us a, a more detailed list later. And then it says around 126.39, the ship's pilot made a general VHF call for tugs in the vicinity of the Dolly. The MDTA data from around this time indicated the Pilot Association dispatcher phoned the MDTA duty officer regarding the blackout. And at 127.04, the pilot commanded the Dolly to drop the port anchor and issued additional steering commands. So then at 127.25, the pilot issued the radio call over the VHF radio and reported that the Dolly had lost power. And so around that same time, the MDTA shows that the duty officer uh, radios two units already, one on each side of the bridge to close the bridge, and then all lanes were shut down. Around 129 on the nose, the ship's speed over ground was recorded at just under seven knots. From this moment until about 129.33, the VDR audio recorded sounds consistent with the collisions, with the collision with the key bridge. Additionally, around this time, a dash camera shows the bridge lights extinguishing. Additional analysis of the VDR audio in comparison of other sources will, will have to be done. They will do that at the NTSB headquarters. And then finally, at 1.29.39 a.m., the pilot reported the key bridge down over the VHF radio to the U.S. Coast Guard. So the NTSB is then going to bring all their experts in now and start pouring over all of the data they collected from the VDR. Well, I'm going to continue to monitor everything here for you on the Francis Scott Key Bridge Collapse. And in the meantime, you can check this video out right here, which is on the FIU Bridge Collapse. That was one of my best engineering videos yet. So thank you so much for tuning in again today and stay tuned for the next one. And we'll see you on that next one.